You're listening to the Business Marketing Show special episode with our guest Kevin Riley from KevinRileyPublishing.com. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Hi everyone, this is Ed K. Smith from the Business Marketing Show. Thank you very much for tuning in. We have a special guest on the show today, Kevin Riley from KevinRileyPublishing.com. Kevin is one of the presenters at the Netpreneur Summit coming up in Tokyo, Japan on the 5th and 6th of September 2015. So we're going to be catching up with Kevin, finding out about his history, how he got involved with the online marketing space and uh, what he's going to be talking about and presenting at the Netpreneur Summit. So welcome, Mr. Kevin Riley. How are you? All the way from Osaka. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, other than being hot, I'm fine. Thanks. <laughs> Good to meet you here on here. Thanks for coming on the podcast. So it's warm in Osaka at the moment, is it? Yeah, it's been around, hovering around 36 degrees every day and high humidity. Yeah, that's pretty warm. That's that's getting to sort of relatively normal Perth sort of weather. Uh, <laughs> well, typically in summer anyway. Not right now. It's freaking cold here at the moment. So. But right, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we don't always have high humidity. It's typically just dry heat. But when it does get hot and humid, it's uncomfortable. So I prefer the dry heat, but um, here we're stuck with humid. Yeah, not much you can do about that. No. So now you have had quite a history in the online marketing space and you've done lots of things. So let's rewind the clock a bit. Go back sure. to pre-online marketing days. Mm-hmm. What were you doing up until like a few years before? What's your history from uh, in in terms of work? What, how were you making your money before the internet? <laughs> well, um, actually, I've been like a serial entrepreneur, so it's been a, a ton of different things. But going back, the fir- first time I ever got on the internet was 1994, um, mm-hmm. and I was I wasn't internet marketing or anything like that. But I just bought a new computer and it had this thing called Netscape on it, which I had no clue what that was. And uh, the kid yeah. down the road had just opened up a provider, which again, I had no clue what that was either. And uh, so I said, hey, hook me up. <laughs> and I got on and saw the, the, the World Wide Web, you know, back then when everything was kind of little tiny pictures and things like that. And I started making websites in 1995. Uh, yep. we, yeah, me and another guy, we created a site. Uh, actually, I was the site creator and he was the... He was the salesman because we were doing for car sales. Uh, that never took off, of course, because every every uh, we go to dealers and try to sell them. And they'd look at us like, "What? What's an internet?" <laughs> we're way way too ahead, far ahead of the curve. So in 1996, I came to Japan to build houses, and that's what uh, that's what kept me going for the next five years. It was uh, Kind of a boom here for two by four houses. So I was building Canadian two by four style houses, um, but Japanese style. And okay. I learned how to do all the all the you know, creating the Japanese rooms and things like that, you know, the Tommy room. Yeah, uh, the and, you know, all kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, which I tell you, that's really fun to do in, in summer here is to build houses. Mm, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hard work. Really Lots of yeah, fear it was, required. It was hard work, but it was it was also rewarding. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but. Um, I, then I, you know, we kind of had an economy go belly up around here, especially in construction. So I ended up teaching English for a while. Uh, so what year is this we're talking now, Kim? I mean, about 2001. Okay. Um, the economy had already kind of crashed about 1997, 98. Uh, mm-hmm. But I got in with a pretty decent company for a while, so I kept building houses for them. I was subcontracting to them. And they, they were pretty decent, so... But by 2001, it was time to make a change. And uh, so I yeah, started teaching English with, with Berlitz, which is a really good company. So I learned a lot yep. from them. It was really, that was one of those things. Yeah, I don't know, you, you know, um, Robert Kiyosaki always says, get a job where you learn something. You know, don't get a job just to make money. Because like, that of course, you know, yeah. where, but get somewhere where you can get an education. Out of it. And, I, and I got a lot out of that. So I was really happy that I did that. Uh, but then I started, yeah, in 2006, I got out into internet marketing. So, kind of eased it. I, I created a book. Uh, I created my first uh, internet 
book, or ebook, <laughs> internet book, but heck was that? But anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> I created my first ebook was uh, I guess guess towards the end of two thousand and five, uh, and it's all to do with natural health. Something I've always really been interested in and studied for probably twenty five years up until then. So I really got into that and did a lot of research for it. Got that out there, and then I was on this place called the Warrior Forum, and they kept asking me questions about marketing and things like this that I, I knew all about because, of, you know, in the other businesses, it's not online. I brought a lot of my offline stuff onto the online. And uh, because they're all asking me all these questions, I started actually creating products for internet marketers. And by 2006, I put out my first product. And Fantastic. just went from there. It just took off. I mean, the Warrior Forum, I got to know the guy who run, ran it back then. Alan says, and uh, I guess he liked my stuff because he asked me if I would uh, do a workshop on his forum. And I was like, wow, me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't even know he knew me that well. You know? but, uh, uh, so, yeah, we did that. And uh, since then, uh, that's what I was doing is teaching people how to create information products that sell online. Uh, okay. And, and is that what you're doing as your main source of income these days? Well, actually, I'm uh, I'm kind of easing ease my way out of um, internet marketing and out of the field of internet marketing. Other than doing a, a talk at the Net, you know, the Netpreneur Summit, because you know James is a friend of mine, and it's in Tokyo. I don't have to go far. Uh, <laughs> but I I I I did that. I still have a a workshop up there that I sell, um, or basically I allow my affiliates to sell if they want to, you know, somebody wants to get run with it, that's cool. But I'm, I decided uh, that as of the new year, I was going to focus on my new business, which is creating products for a local market in uh, English language learning. Uh, okay. Something that obviously I'm pulling, again, pulling on what I learned from Berlitz and uh, also something I, I just wanted to get back to creating different products. So yeah, yes. yeah. To me, so, it's, to me, it's like I've, I, I did the time. I, I I did what eight years or something like that in uh, in the internet marketing field. It was great and all, but now I want to do something else. Yeah. So to be clear for people who are listening in the first time or who are new to this sort of area of online marketing and internet marketing, is you were actually teaching internet marketing for people who wanted to know how to do internet marketing, correct? Um, yeah, um, and- like like a. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> Shovel seller. <laughs> yeah, well. but, yeah. Now, you know, tools. Uh, actually, I was teaching people how to create their own, own products, uh, okay. both in uh, things like, for example, uh, how to uh, ebooks and things like that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. and videos, video tutorials, all those kind of things is what I was what I was teaching people. And yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, I've had some great students. So you know, who's uh, I would say surpassed me in, in the kind of business they built because I'm just not that. Um, I don't want to build that big a business. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I, I built it where I'm comfortable and happy. Yeah, that's that's fine. I've had some who just took off. Yeah, we really built massive businesses. So I'm really yes, happy about that. I got a lot of people off to a good start, and now uh, I'm ready to do something else. Yeah, and but, you're going to be using your knowledge to yeah. to market a product that's not for the internet marketing space. It's for the language yes. and learning space. So you're using what you've learned. And applying it to that area is that an accurate prediction or statement? Oh I yeah, say? yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't think you say that. You know, when you say <clears throat> what you've learned, I think that's a never-ending. That's a it's, a. it's this ongoing learning curve that will never ever end because mm. there's so many changes. You're marketing on the internet. Um, you just want to be learning all the time because, like, for example, Facebook. All the changes on Facebook, and now with the uh, you know with the retargeting. Um, which is something that I'm definitely taking advantage of with my new company uh, because it's fantastic. Um, and all the other things that you can do that we couldn't do even like five years ago, maybe even a couple of years ago, it's it's, it's an ongoing thing that um, and anybody who's listening should note this, that you just want to never stop learning. Uh, obviously, you know, learning and applying, mm. <laughs> which, which seems to be a stumbling block for a lot of people is getting around to applying it. But, uh, yeah, you're just... Continually going to be learning something new because the uh, always something new coming out and it's fantastic. I mean, our opportunities are. Uh, I don't know. People have always said, "Oh man, I think the opportunities are so much better for you guys when you first started." You know, back in when well, I got it in two thousand six, but even then, people were saying, "Oh, so much better in two thousand one or two thousand two or whatever." No, no, no. I think we got better opportunities now than we had back then. 
I agree 100%. And they're the same people who are saying those sorts of things that will keep saying them, whether it's 2001, 2009, <laughs> 2020, they'll still be saying it because they're the ones that don't apply what they're learning. And then it's just an excuse. It's a very handy excuse to say, oh, it was okay for you guys, but not for me. Poor little old me. So yeah, yeah it, true. Doesn't, it doesn't doesn't cut it for me. It's just an excuse. There's opportunity all the time, everywhere. You just got to open your eyes and apply what you're learning. So uh, well done. And so look, you, you originally were born in Switzerland. You're saying so you're from Switzerland. You spent yeah, some time in, in Canada, and yeah. now you're living in Japan. So yes, why is it you have decided to call? Japan, your home? Well, I came here in 96. Um, I was supposed to be here for two months. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that was it, yeah. Uh, as, uh, back then, I was building houses over in Canada, and um, I so I had this opportunity to go to Germany, actually, first, and I applied for it and took for a long, long, long time for the visa to come through, and then somebody called me up and said, hey, we heard you're willing to go work overseas, would you go to Japan? And I'm, I'm like, yeah, sure, that sounds great, I'd love to go to Japan, right? And they're like, you know, I'm going to pay a flight over, put you up in an apartment over there, pay all your meals, and uh, blah, 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 was, and the, the pay was fantastic. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you sold me already, you know? Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> had me there. at hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> So, yeah, I, I came to Osaka. I didn't even know about Osaka. I mean, I, I knew Kobe and Kyoto and Tokyo at that time for me. Mm -hmm. I heard of Kobe was in the news because of the big earthquake the year yeah, before. Yeah, that was basically what brought me over here because the guy who wanted us here uh, realized that 2 by 4 withstood earthquakes better and he wanted to build more 2 by 4 So mm -hmm. I came here and um, I actually, my first couple of weeks weren't the best here because I was stuck with a whole bunch of smokers, all the other carpenters I was working with, which uh -huh. just, you know, made me feel horrible. I'd be stuck in a car with them and, and our apartment and everything. But I love the city. I was just like, it's really cool. All these little streets. It reminded me more of Europe. Hmm. It's the narrow little streets and the hustle and bustle. It was like being in Zurich or something like that. And I was like, oh, this is cool. I really like this place. And I started exploring around on weekends. And uh, yeah, I just, Went from there. I I said to him, I said, look, I'm I'm willing to come back after the Christmas. Looks, we're going home for Christmas holiday back to Canada at that time. And I said, I'm, I'm willing to come back and do some more building. And the guy said, great, we'll have you over here to build some more houses. And uh, that was it. After that, I just kept staying here. <laughs> and so, decided that, that was do you have a anywhere. permanent residency now in Japan? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I got it a few years ago, and so uh, that's that's really nice. Fantastic. Yeah. It's one of the sort of places that a lot of people don't think about going. I don't know why for some reason, maybe because they think there's going to be the, the language barrier. But the, the <laughs> one thing that we found was particularly after traveling everywhere else, because Japan was right at the end of our trip, was the level of service from, from everywhere. I mean, in terms <laughs> of the friendliness, just like you, you could be standing in the train station trying to work out the timetable or the machines or something, and someone just passing by, not staff or anything, just a, a, you know, a, a, someone who's using the tra transit system themselves comes along and, and asks you if they can help you. Um, quite often I think it's so they can practice their English, but, <laughs> but it's, they're so friendly. I mean, you go into a McDonald's yeah. and you get better service at McDonald's than half the you know five star restaurants that you go to. It's it's crazy, uh, and that was one of the things that we really loved when we were there. And the language barrier didn't really come into it because there's always someone willing to try and get past that. Has that been your yeah. experience? Yeah, yeah. When I when I we first came over here, there was three of us. Um, they put. It was my first time building over here, so there was another carpenter who'd been here once before, and then another fellow, and the three of us came over here, but nobody spoke any Japanese, or, you know, a few words you'd learned from watching Shogun and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, it wasn't all, all that helpful, except for the I don't understand, which is Wakari Masen, back, I, I said back then, yep. and uh, I, I was saying that a lot. And But the thing <laughs> was, yeah, there wasn't very many people that spoke any English, or very little, or very broken but we just we found we found our way around, and we'd go to restaurants where they had plastic food outside. Mm. We, you know, call the person and point to what we wanted. It and is stuff handy, like isn't this. it? <laughs> yeah, and they just say, "Okay, great, great." And and the, and the service was—I mean, you know, like you walk into a restaurant, and they, 
right away they'd be plunking down some like green tea for us and driving to a gas station was just uh, back then i was changed now it's not quite like it was back then but back then four people would come running out as we drove into the gas station one of them would be uh, cleaning our windows the other one would be checking the air pressure and you know, cleaning out our ashtray putting these little smelly beads in there to make it smell better and putting in gasoline we're just like we were blown away with us a bit like, like the scene know, out of back to the future yeah, they counted it and be like, yeah, pump it yourself type thing, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and that service actually, you know, I, I guess haven't been here so long that I just think I'm, I'm, I expect that. I really hate it when I go other places I don't get that. And it really annoys me. Like when I was in the States, I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, what is this service? So I also, in, in my own business, I tend to incorporate that. And I've, I was getting all these people, like my customers, wow, your service is so great and all this. I'm like, well, I thought that was pretty normal, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> So it really pays off. Like, um, you know, there's one thing that people listening, when you, you build an internet marketing business and, and you get people sending an email and asking you a question, is that um, I just check my email every morning. Doesn't take much. I have a I have a mail save actually, which is really just a vacation responder, which they love because he always denigrates me. He's like putting me down, oh my horrible boss and stuff like this. Um, and they <laughs> answer him, and then I I'll, I'll email them, and they're always happy because they're like, wow, your service is so great. And it's, you know, wait, what's, okay, I try to do it within twenty four hours. Um, but that's something to, to keep in mind is that I built a reputation in that field. For my service as much as my products and um something to keep in mind when you're building your own business you know? sure. uh, so just keep that in mind because it doesn't take much little little bit extra people really notice it very true very true indeed so people who are thinking of coming along to netpreneur summit uh, who are listening to this podcast uh, what will you be covering and I'm having a wild guess it's going to be what we've been talking about, but can you be a bit more specific about what, what you're going to be talking about at the Netpreneur Summit? Yeah. Um, actually, James asked me if I could do a, about the same as I did last year mm -hmm. because he said they, I guess the people that were there really rated it high. They really liked it. So I'm like, okay, I hate doing the same thing, but so I'm going to make some changes. Uh, <laughs> what I'll be doing is... Um, what I'm working with now is interactive uh, information products. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'll be. That's what I'll be teaching is is uh, how. To, and I, I've got some new examples from some of the products I'm building right now. Uh, I'll be bringing those along. Or there'll be the slides and stuff like that. So we'll be going through that. But uh, yeah, inter interactive products are just fantastic because they really engage your customers and just you know make your customers so much happier and get them to come back to build, buy more of your stuff. So that's what I'll be teaching at the, at the summit, going over that. Uh, I think James said I have about an hour. <laughs> so I'll try to time it for an hour, not go over. But, um, yeah, it's going to be good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. I mean, look, showing, how much can you do in an hour? Not, not a huge amount, but you can impart some, some nuggets. And the whole point oh, of yeah. this yep. is, and this is probably what you've experienced as well, when you ever go to conferences or things like this, it's not necessarily just the stuff you're getting from the, the speakers on stage. And what you do get is, is great, but it's the talking to them afterwards or hanging out for a drink at the bar or, you know, going out yeah. for some food. You, that's, that's where all the magic happens as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and, and that's where things yep. will be learnt that the you just won't even think of talking about on the stage because it'll just be in you know in in context with the conversation that you're having. So, you know, this is where people need to turn up. You can't just learn this stuff online by doing courses. There's there's a whole other area that gets missed out by not turning up to the conferences. So, um, well, I tell you, um, I, I, first time I ever met James actually was uh, 2007. Mm. And I'd already I'd already known James a little bit online because of his like used to do the Golden Week giveaway, and I was in his Golden Week giveaway, and about a month or two later, uh, there was a thing in Singapore, and we all went to it. Uh, and I met James, I met a couple other guys there, and then I met a whole bunch of guys from like Malaysia and uh, Singapore and the Philippines, and actually Ian Del Carmen, the guy who just won the trip to here. Yeah, uh, yeah. I met him there. Yeah, the first time I met him was there. And I just met all these people from all over the place. And I tell you, the conference itself, I remember, I, I liked James from the very beginning. I was like, okay, yeah, this guy's like me because we're both making fun of the 
person who was uh, up on the stage. <laughs> you know, we're, just, we're, we're just making jokes about it and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. This is it. Yeah, let's get out of here. We go out and have a drink. And then that's it. I mean, we were barely inside watching any of the presentations because that was a really, unlike the Netpreneur Summit where you will learn more in depth, that was a really, um, it was kind of like, you know, for newbies and all these excited people in there and they were selling them stuff. <laughs> oh, the pitch fest. <laughs> Oh, it was a pitch I hate, fest, the, I hate you know? those things. Yeah. I wasn't absolutely. impressed by it at all. But uh, I'm, I was glad I went because, like, the people I met outside, you know, were hanging out. There's a little uh, cafe around the corner. We'd all get together there. And then we went out. We went bar hopping one night and stuff like this. And yes, you do. the people that I met there, w that network was over the next few years when I was selling the internet marketing crowd, I mean, you know, like, and like Ian, Ian, he promoted a lot of my stuff and uh, a bunch of the other guys I met there too. You know, we promoted each other's stuff uh, and that's really important. That was, that networking was the most important thing I got out of that. Uh, like I said, I didn't learn anything from the, uh, the one thing I sat in on at the beginning was like, Oh, and they have to build a website. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> We're gonna talk about really talk about what a domain name was and what a website was. I'm like, oh boy, this is uh, way below me. I'm gone. Um, so we learned nothing from from the conference itself, but the, I mean, massive value out of the people on that. And awesome. so. I know last year when we were at the Netpreneur Summit, we were going, uh, we went out to dinner together, we went drinking afterwards, stayed up way too late, way too many nights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was great, you know, like, like the, you know, we all, we talked about all kinds of stuff, we get to know each other, uh, you know, we're, we're all in contact now. There's a lot of people I met there that I've never been in contact before, we're all in contact uh, through uh, Facebook and stuff like that, and we keep in touch with each, other, with each other. So, yeah, and that's that's the biggest part of going to any of these things. Um, but having said that, there was some fantastic presentations last year, uh, and I see see a couple of them coming again for this year too. Um, oh God, I forget the guy, the basketball guy. Yeah, yeah, J Jacob uh, Jacob. Hiller. Jacob Hiller. Yeah, how can yeah. I forget his name? Yeah, I just I interviewed Jacob the other day. He's actually in Peru at the moment, and uh, he's got an awesome story. And so uh, his, his, his podcast will be going up soon. Yeah, and his uh, yeah his presentation was fantastic. I mean, I do a lot of work with YouTube, and I was taking notes in his presentation. Uh, there was a couple other guys there too. Their, their presentations were just really spot on, and, and there was so much you could learn from them. So it's not a pitch fest, which is nice. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's really <laughs> networking and learning opportunity. It's, yeah, it's and great. fun. We've got to have. Oh fun. yeah, definitely fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's the point <laughs> of doing any of this if we're not having fun? If you want to do things and not have fun, go and get a job. I say. So exactly. Cool. Well, look, I for one uh, greatly look forward to meeting you in person, Kevin. It's been great having this catch up and. Uh, a chat to give people more idea of who you are before they end up coming to the summit if they're coming for the first time and if they're not coming shame on you for not coming um, <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are if you're listening no only kidding if you can't make it you can't make it but uh, do, do your best too so you can come along and listen to people like kevin so uh thank you for your time we'll let you go back to probably going and having a beer and cooling off in the hot sticky humid weather in in uh, osaka so, uh, yeah, it we'll... actually looks like it's getting a little cooler out there now, so that's good. Perfect. This evening might be a cooler evening. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and it is Friday after all. <laughs> yes. All right, my friend, thank you, and we'll see you in Osaka. Well, not in Osaka. Okay. Right. Yeah. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> in Tokyo. <laughs> You're swinging by here first and picking me up, are you? Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, no, I'm not. No, no. All right, no, I'll definitely see you in Tokyo. I'm, I'm going up on the uh, I'm coming up on the Friday, and then I'm staying quite a few days the next week because there's some masterminds and stuff going on yeah. or whatever. It's, all kind yeah. of, it's just worth about staying long, you know? Yeah, so. I'll be there from the, th the, the 3rd through till the 12th, I think. So I'm there for about yeah, 10, 10 days or something. It's so, about the same, I think. Yeah, I think i got the same yeah. days. Right. I'm staying at the same hotel as the conference. I'm staying at the... the ah, you lucky bugger. I couldn't get in. Why oh, couldn't you? <laughs> no, no. And uh, I, I left it too long. I was like, oh, man, I keep forgetting to do that, right? And I got on the other day and all the hotels around there. But 
I found a place just across the tracks, and actually, it's like really cheap. I mean, it doesn't look fantastic. You know, it's like from the outside, it's like, ooh, when was this thing built? Like back you know, right after the war. Um, <laughs> but actually, the rooms inside look really nice. So hopefully, it's a nice place. And uh, yeah, hey, I'm, one, I'm I'm saving a ton of money. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> all... I, I was actually quite surprised. I mean, for me, <laughs> living in Perth, where everything is ridiculously expensive. Uh, the hotel room was $145 a night Australian, including breakfast, and that's about half the cost of your normal decent yep. hotels in Perth. So I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Tokyo is not as, you know, for, for anybody who's coming, like I know some people have been worried about that. I had a guy asking me about this, and uh, Tokyo is not as expensive as it used to be. Um, no. It used to be that you couldn't find, like, you know, here in Osaka, you can find lunch for under 10 bucks really easy. But uh, you get up in Tokyo, like, whoa, what's, what is this? I'm just not, I'm cheap that way because it's like I'm used to the lunches I get here. Um, but the other time we were up there, um, the first day I got in last year, and a bunch of us went out and we found this really nice little restaurant up inside a building where, you know, they had a nice, we call it Tay Show, it's like a lunch set. Okay, yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah, but it, I mean, this is a quality one. Not, not like I'd get a cheap restaurant. And we paid like seven bucks for it. I'm like, what? That's what the heck? That's wrong, you know. But no, <laughs> the prices have gotten really, really super reasonable up there now. Uh, so happy about that. So yeah. everybody don't have to worry about. You don't need to bring your gold bars with you. <laughs> <laughs> good, good to know. All right, yeah. thank you, Kevin. Uh, we'll see you soon. Yeah, we'll do. Thanks for your time, mate. Take it easy. Okay. Bye now. Bye. You've been listening to The Business Marketing Show. You can find us at businessmarketingshow.com on iTunes, SoundCloud and Stitcher.